Hey guys, what's up? It's Furious for 11 here, and today I'm back with another Game Maker tutorial episode, part 10. We have finally hit part 10, and trust me, once this episode is basically over, I'm gonna try and get more and more videos out of this series as possible because this series is coming to an end, uh, basically a bit after this episode because. Once we get to make a night suit, it won't really take that long because it's mostly just duplication, changing some variables, adding a few little things, and there you go, you basically got your game done. So after this episode, uh, I'm going to try and, you know, make more episodes because I know that I take a long time between my episodes and I'm sorry for that, but I got stuff to do. So basically, in this episode, we're going to be doing the clock, the night completion screen, and the night two screen. So let's get on to that. Okay, so first off, we're going to get started on making the clock. The clock is probably the biggest part of this episode because it's what makes it nice to keep going and going and going. Alright? And also, uh, just like a little thing that I'm going to say, you don't want to make your nights too long because if you make them too long, it's going to get really, really boring or unless uh, you make your nights really chaotic, for example, like FNAF, FNAF 2. So, first off, what you want to do is you want to make a sprite for your clock, uh, depending on how much time your game makes because not everyone makes their game to si from 12 to 6. Some people do, I don't know, 10 to 8 or 12 to 10. Whatever you want to do, it just make a clock for each hour and if you want to be more detailed and stuff then you can make it for I don't know every 10 minutes but that's all up to you uh, in this episode each the whole night is gonna take only one minute because I'm not trying to bore you guys I'm not gonna make you guys sit through like 10 minutes of just watching the clock making sure it works I'm not gonna let you guys I'm not gonna make sure you guys go through that so what you want to do is you want to go to your um, your office background like this one right here uh, so you want to select the box where you're gonna have your clock so like I what I did is that I just kind of selected this little area and I copied it and I went to paint.net and if you don't have paint.net I highly recommend you download it it's free and it's really good and you just download a bunch of plugins and and you're basically set uh, and in there you just edit the clock so here I made a little clock now make sure you have a transparent background behind it as well so that there's no white or anything behind it which will make it look ugly and make sure it also fits too because you don't want to have a clock that I don't know is going through one of your bars and stuff see like mine fits pretty well right there and it doesn't go through any of the bars it doesn't really obstruct anything so it's just sitting there nice and neat so since I'm doing 12 to 6 a.m. I made one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven sprites of it. Each one with different times. So right here is 12 a.m. For example, right here is 3 a.m. And so on and so forth. So now we're going to have to program the clock. Now, this isn't really that hard. You just got to make sure you pay very close attention to make sure you don't mess up anything. Uh, because just saying, if something goes wrong on your side, uh, it's most likely because you did something wrong. I uh, just want to point that out because a lot of people say uh, I I checked everything and something bad happened but if it's working on my side it should work for you so first off what you want to do is you want to make a create event and basically make like the timer like as we always have been but this one might be kind of weird because right here it says set clock to zero why would it be zero well that's because instead of going from up to down we're gonna be going from down to up so remember how right here we would have it going towards minus one or making go plus one. I just find this much easier because then you can make it like, oh, I want to make each hour, I don't know, 60 seconds a minute. Uh, so that way you don't have to be like, all right, 60, si uh, you know, 60 times whatever, how many hours you have in your game and all that, you know, you don't have to go through that. You just make it count upwards. So now what we got to do here is first off, uh, make sure your sprite is of the first like hour. So right here. It's s clock 12 uh, And make sure the def is negative one or whatever it is and make sure it's visible as well So once you get done making this part right here You got to go to you got to make an alarm zero event uh, Make sure you don't forget about the creative creative event as well 
and make a set variable clock to plus one. So the variable is clock, the value is plus one, and make, make, make sure it's relative. So then you just put a set alarm zero to 30, and right here is where we get to all this stuff. So first we're gonna, so since like I said, each hour is gonna be 10 seconds. So right here is gonna say, if the clock is equal to 10 seconds, then it's gonna change the sprite of the clock to 1 a.m. So that way, every 10 seconds, it counts upwards. But instead of just making one of these, you gotta repeat it. So right here I make, if clock is equal to 20, now it changes to 2 a.m. and so on and so forth, all the way till I get to 6 a.m. Now, right here at 6 a.m., if you remember from way, way earlier in the series, we made a little uh, fade to next room thing right here. Basically, you're gonna use that uh, for this part right here. So what we're gonna want it to do is basically the same thing right here, uh, four, five, and six. And then right here, create instance of object O fade to next room. Now make sure that if you are using this, that the night one complete screen will be right after, all right? Or just make sure that it will be in case you haven't made the room yet. So that's basically all you do for your clock. It's really that simple. So now what we're gonna be doing next is the night completion screen. So first off, we're gonna need to come, we're gonna need to come up with a little menu screen or whatever for when it's like night complete, woo, yes. Uh, so I made this little thing right here. It just says night complete. Not really that much, but you could add like, you know how I did in uh, my FNAF game, how I did like little explosions and stuff and like a little tune. You know, you could do stuff like that, but you know, I kind of got to get this episode out. So I just decided to make that. So now for the night complete screen, make sure that you make a room called RM night complete one. And also don't forget to put your clock in as well. Uh, you can just sit on a desk, on the wall, if you're doing like one on the wall, which would be pretty cool. Uh, but whatever you're doing, just make sure you put your clock in. So now we put a RM night complete one night one because remember this is two nights, and right here uh, it's pretty simple. So what we're gonna have to do right now, uh, sorry if my voice is cracking. <laughs> uh, so now what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna be we're gonna need to make an object of the night one complete. So right here it's pretty easy. Uh, you make another timer. Uh, starting from seven seconds, uh, counting down, of course. Uh, I put the variable as night one complete. You can just make it night complete or complete or whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Uh, set alarm zero to 30, make an alarm zero event, and also make sure it's visible. Make sure you set your sprite and everything. Uh, now put set variable uh, night one complete or whatever your variable is to minus one relative. And set alarm zero to thirty. And now, if night one complete is equal to zero, then it will fade to the next room, or whatever you want to do here for it to go to the next room. Like let's say it goes to a cutscene or something. So right here we got that. And also mini games will be coming up uh, in later episodes because I know a lot of people have been requesting that. Okay, so once you got that object done for the night one complete, you go to your objects and you just pop it right into the room. Pretty simple. And just for effect, I put in my fade in creator so it doesn't just pop up out of nowhere and it just kind of fades in smoothly. So, yeah. And also, if you're wondering what this green thing is, uh, I made a like, little room skipper so that way uh, I don't have to sit through the newspaper and everything so I can just make, make this a bit quicker. Okay, so once you got that, we're going to make the night two screen. And as you guys obviously know how to make the night one screen because, well, we've done it before, uh, the night two screen is pretty simple. And I just noticed I forgot the static and stuff. <laughs> uh, so, for the night two screen, I'm going to go ahead and just duplicate. So, I guess you're going to see some actual, uh, you know, creation right here. So, I'm just going to go ahead and replace the one on the back. And also remember to make another uh, screen of the night one screen right here. Just basically duplicate it and change the sprite. It's not really that much you have to do for this one. So duplicate, name, sprite, you're done. That's basically about it. So uh, if you duplicate your room, that's completely fine. Just make sure you take off completely the other one. And then we can just slot in our other night screen. Boom, right there. And we already got our static and everything. And yeah, this is pretty good. 
Okay, so let me just change the names really quick. Well, actually, let me just delete this one off. There we go. So, RM night to screen. My typing is horrible today. <laughs> All right, so there you go. It pops up now. Okay, so now for uh, night two to just be ready, uh, we're gonna have to duplicate. Or if you're gonna make like a uh, like a night, cause like in FNAF, what I did is I I made like a hard mode night uh, where everything's a whole lot different. You might not want to duplicate because you know it's kind of like you're gonna be building it from the ground up for the for that one night per se. But if you're gonna do from like let's say nights one through five. Then I think it's just easier to duplicate it, add some stuff in, like more animatronics and stuff. Uh, by the way, I'm not going to be showing how to make more animatronics. Um, it's because it's basically the exact same thing as having an animatronic move through here. So like how I made, uh, what's his name again? Rick? Yes. Uh, moving from Cam 1 to Cam 2 to the office. You can just make like the other one go from Cam 1, Cam 3, Cam 4 to the office. You know, it's kind of that simple. Alright, so once you got the Night 2 one ready, which we'll be doing in the next episode, uh, which won't be that hard to change, you basically just change variables like how fast the animatronic moves and stuff, and you basically got your other nights ready. So once you make your first night and the cutscenes, it's basically just really, really easy after that. So, now that we have completed uh, all of this, we're going to have to bug check. Now... The way I bug check stuff is I like to do anything possible that I think would cause a bug. Like, for example, I don't know, leaving Rick at the door for too long uh, to where he just doesn't jump scare me or something. Or if the clock doesn't go to the next night. Making sure everything works, basically. Because you don't want, you don't want to push out a game that's not functional, obviously. So, we're just going to wait for this to load up. All right, now that the game is loaded up, we're just gonna wait for this to get off. Warning, this game contains flashing lights, jump scares, and loud noises. Play at your own risk. Also, if you have noticed, these episodes are actually kind of shorter. Um, I don't really know why I've been making them shorter, but I'll try to make them longer just to fit more into one video later on. Okay, so right here we got the newspaper. I'm just gonna use my room skipper, which is the R key. Right here, night one, looking good. And also, if you if you uh, are paying a lot of attention, the night one screen looks different, and that's because I don't know. I just kind of want to change the look of it. I think the little digital font looks way nicer. Okay, so here we got Rick. All right, so basically what I just do is I want to check everything. As you can see, the clock is working. Every ten seconds, it's gonna go up. So we just wait another ten seconds. There you go, two a.m. Oh look, there's Rick. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna let him jump scare me just to bug check that the jump scare works. So if we wait a little bit, I'm just gonna actually pull the camera up to make sure it goes down. And as you can see, there we go. Because that that's what I mean by bug checking. Do the most random thing possible that you would think would cause a bug. Because like, what if I forgot to make it to where when he jump scares me, the view would go back to the office. Because then I would be not even seeing a jump scare since the view would be on the camera and not the office. You see what I mean now? Okay, so now that we can just use the room skipper, we're just gonna make sure the light works. Da -da 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 -da. There we go, it works, it turns off. All right, make, make sure the mask works. There we go, it's getting even more and more toxic. And there we go, it flies right off. All right, let's check the cameras for that boy. There he is. All right, let's put our mask on. Basically, we're just trying to get through the night just so we can, you know, get through this. Oh, no, it's 3 a.m. Devil's Hour. <laughs> Actually, what what I think would be a cool concept for, I don't know, I'm just throwing this out to you guys just in case you want to maybe do something like this. Or, like, at 3 a.m., it kind of gets, like, I don't know, you know, harder or something. I don't know. Just a little thing. Like, in case you're doing, like, one of those games where it's, like, one night. You know, like, one night at Flumpties or something. I don't know. Just a little idea. You guys can do it. All right, so now that he's gone, there we go, night complete, let's go. So the clock obviously worked because it moved me over. And then as you can see, it fades right to night two, right to the night two screen. And yeah, it looks pretty cool. So now it's just gonna take us right to the night two, which is not really night two because it's just a night one duplicate. But yeah, basically everything works and that's what we're checking for. 
and everything works, which is the good part. So, yeah, that's basically it for this episode. In the next episode, I think we're going to be doing... We're going to probably most likely be like doing the variables and stuff for night two and then i think probably at the end of the series i'm thinking uh i'm gonna the like the very last episode is gonna be how to make the mini game uh because mini games and stuff like that i find that more of like just like little add-ons that you can do at the very end of the game so you want to get the fundamentals and stuff into your game for example if you want to make like a little demo uh then you want to mainly push out that because like let, let's say you're making the mini game before the actual night and stuff then that's kind of you know it would be a bit confusing to do so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this episode of game maker of the gaming tutorial series if you did enjoy be sure to press that like button and subscribe to join the warriors and expand our empire and yeah i'll be hoping to make more episodes of this sooner so we can get this series done anyways see you guys next time bye